Hi there, thanks for joining. We're gonna paint this wine glass with acrylics on a canvas board of 30 by 40 centimeters. I found this picture at unsplash.com and you can find the link in the description of this video. And I chose this picture because uh, I like it, it's pleasing to the eye. And um, But I wanted to show something in the painting process. Uh, and that is to try and look with the eyes of an artist, of a painter. Because uh, uh, normally people that don't paint every day would see this photo and would say oh it's a wine glass and it is transparent and translucent and I see uh, reflections and I see liquid and it's a certain color and all that uh, sort of things. But when you look in that manner it becomes difficult to make a good painting. It is easier when you just look at the photo or the 3D object and you just say oh this is a form, this is an ellipse I see a line here, I see contour lines, I see uh, a, a dark color uh, area here, I see a darker uh, shape here, I see a lighter shape there. You look to the world in a different way. You reduce it to flat planes, uh, color planes and forms and shapes. Well, that's what we're gonna, going to practice with this uh, photograph. I like working on a toned canvas, so first I'll show you how you can do that. Well, it's quite easy, but you need gesso and I've completely forgotten to put it here. Well, there we are finally. <laughs> uh, I put some gesso on my palette, like this. And of course, when you just start painting, sometimes it's difficult to know how much gesso you should take. That's a matter of experience. And then I have some black paint, ivory black in this case, but you can also use oxide black or another black, Do doesn't matter. You don't need much black, of course, because black will tone your paint very quickly or your gesso. And now I have a palette knife and I've put the gesso, by the way, I've put it on a throwaway palette. Uh, how do you call it in English? Don't know. <laughs> throwaway palette and for single use, tear off palette. Now I know. You put a little black in it and you just try. And it isn't that uh, important how light or dark it is, but maybe middle gray. So somewhere in between the darkest dark and the lightest light. But that, that doesn't matter too much. Just don't make it too dark, but also don't make it too light. You, you use the back side, one side of the palette knife, knife the back side. The other uh, side stays relatively clean. And you just roll it like this, left to right, left to right, and just <coughs> squeeze it down. You may use a little bit of force, that's no problem. You cannot hurt the paint. <laughs> and just mix it until you have a nice even color. Then I get a big brush, a big flat brush. Don't use a brush like this eh, with two hairs because it will take hours to fill this whole canvas. So I put on the gesso and I just quickly apply it to my canvas board as much as possible. And uh, uh, fairly thick, you see? By the way, if you're painting on paper, you can also apply a layer of gesso, but then you can dilute it with a little bit of water. But when you paint on canvas or on canvas board like this, you don't have to dilute it, you can use it straight from the tube. Well, now I start making strokes in one direction and I don't apply force. I just let it slide slightly over on top of the of the gesso. I slide, I lift my brush, I slide for the next stroke and so on. It barely touches the gesso and so I get a nice evenly spread coat. By the way, uh, put something underneath your uh, canvas board of course because uh, you don't want to get your table all messed up like mine but this table doesn't matter. But it's always advisable to do more canvases in one session, of course. So I will need this later on. It's a canvas that I use for practice purposes. It doesn't have to be that well prepared. Just a little layer of gesso. Gray gesso is all right. 
but uh, you see so you do several canvases at once of course that's uh, ideal situation and the next thing very important allow it to dry uh, for 24 hours at least uh, before you start painting with the acrylics well it's 24 hours later the gesso is completely dry we can start painting but maybe it's a good idea to start with a sketch you can sketch with pencil if you like but i prefer sketching with paint i have white and black paint and with those two i first start making a gray that matches the gray that i have here on my canvas board i'll tell you why that's because I want to be able to erase my mistakes. So when I make the same color as uh, the color of my background, I have an erase color, so to speak. Oh, and I almost forgot, I make it slightly lighter than the color on my uh, canvas board because acrylics dry a little bit darker than what you see on your palette. Now, it's not all that important, but I make it slightly lighter. That's my background color. Now, I make a color for sketching. And of course, I can go start sketching with, with black paint, but that will be difficult to cover with color in the next layers. So, I just make another gray, and this gray I make a little bit darker than the background. Well, usually I would make it something like this, maybe, uh, to show you. But then chances are that you don't see it that good on the video. So I make it slightly darker. Almost forgot, I also wanted to show you the benefits of working on a toned canvas. When you have a white canvas, you can only go darker. You can only put darker colors than white on it. When you have a gray canvas, you can put dark colors on it, so black for instance, oh I mixed it with a little bit of the gray but you understand what I mean. You can put on dark colors and this color as well, is uh, the sketch color is darker than the gray I have. But you can also put light colors on it, so I can just put on white and that's a big benefit. Another thing is you don't get blinded as much as with a white canvas. A white canvas can be very blinding. And the last benefit is that when you paint on a white, white canvas and you don't cover all the canvas, you see those white bits coming through. And that makes it look like as if your painting isn't finished. So, and with a toned canvas you never have that problem. It always looks professional. <laughs> That's what we like. Okay, but now we start sketching. Enough talk. The sketching phase uh, is just looking for easy things to begin with. And my first thought when I see this is that uh, the glass is nicely situated uh, almost exactly in the middle of our photo. That's one thing. So you could say there's an axis here, a vertical axis, uh, in the middle of our canvas. The other thing is it has a lot of symmetry in it. Both sides, I don't know if the camera can pick it up like this, yes it does. Both sides are equal. So there's a lot of symmetry in it. But there's no symmetry in this part, the table and the background. But that already clears up a lot of stuff that you think, okay, it's, it's, that helps. For the first layout, I use a fairly big flat brush. Uh, it's no use starting with a very small brush with only two hairs. Maybe when, when you want to refine things in the end, then you can start using such a small brush. For sketching, I also use a little bit of water with my paint so I dilute it a little bit not too much but just to make it a little bit more smooth that you can easily make uh, longer lines for example first thing I'm gonna do is put in those angled lines 
The direction of the line is important. You can measure it with your pencil like this. You see, you can measure the direction. But uh, let's say it starts around here in our canvas and it goes all the way up just uh, slightly above the middle of our canvas. So I have this point and let's say the middle of my canvas is about here. And then I connect these two points like this with a straight line, uh, as straight as possible. And uh, the thing is, when you put your flat brush perpendicular to your canvas, then you can make a very easy long straight line like this and you move your arm you don't do this uh, with your wrist like this then you get a line like this this may be a little bit exaggerated take your pencil perpendicular to the canvas and draw with your arm and then you will see it's not that difficult to make a, a reasonably straight line and you can practice that as well Okay, now the other line. It almost is the same uh, angle. Uh, well, it starts around here. Here, here it uh, goes out of my frame. And, uh, well, let's say here. We don't have to be too precise about this kind of stuff. It's, it's just background thing. And I know here the line shifts because of the glass. It distorts the line. We know that with our brains. But I don't uh, look at that at this moment. I just make this a straight line. I can adjust it in a la later phase. This is building. Sketching is building. As said before, there is a vertical uh, line you can make in the, in the center of your canvas, like this. I do it lightly, but again perpendicular. I do it a lot of times now to show you that I just do it from uh, from my arm, not not from my wrist like this. So you can you can paint from your wrist if you have to do details and that sort of stuff. But we're not into details yet. And just pull a line, no matter where it uh, starts or ends. I just want a center line, and there it is. Then I'm gonna establish where. Uh, in the height I want to start my glass at the highest point of the glass of the object I don't even think about it as a glass, but I see okay here is a distance and here is a distance so maybe something like this for the For the top part. It's not that important. Don't mind if it's not uh, exactly correct like that and the bottom part well, maybe it ends something like here so we have a lot of connection points already uh, going on, a lot of points to hold on to. Now we're going to do something funny. So we're going to look at the shapes that we see around the glass. That's the strange thing. We see this dark form here. We have the middle line and this is the dark part, that, that part. And I want to paint in this form. This dark form, so I don't look at the form of the glass, I look at the form of this shape. That's the negative space. And it helps you to paint more easily what you see. So it goes up a little bit, I'm looking at this. Then it goes a little bit like that. Then it goes more like this. And you can do it with straight lines in this uh, phase, it doesn't matter that much. And then we see that it goes like this and then whoop, it goes a little bit like this. You see? So this is the form that I see here, this dark form. Well, maybe I'll just put it in with a bit of diluted paint so you can see what I mean. But that is also, that's not only how I paint, it's also how I look at the picture. You can do that as well, it doesn't matter. That's, that's the po whole point of acrylics. You can do whatever you want. You can paint over it as many times as you like. So I just put it in quickly with some acrylic paint. The sketch color, just to show you the form. 
Well, that's a very strange painting. But we go on. Now we go to the other side. And of course the form there is, is uh, symmetrical. So what I do now is I don't mind the form, this one. I just look at, okay, I need the same amount of space on the other side uh, of the center line. Eh? So it goes a little bit like this and it goes a little bit like that, just as here. And then I just have to draw a helpline to not get to f from uh, not getting too confused because I want to copy this point the same width to this part. I cannot do that here because there my glass is already tapering. So like this I think. It's, uh, it's kind of the same distance. Yes it is. Okay. So, and now I look at that part and I just try to copy that to this side. And uh, by the way, it doesn't matter if it doesn't go well right away. You can always adjust your forms. There's no problem. See that this looks very strange, but we are building the painting and maybe, I hope, it's gonna work out. But when you paint more often you get more experienced and you trust the process more. Okay, now we're gonna look at the part here above and this is a very big negative shape I see here. So I just look at the negative shape and I just, uh, well, uh, this, this from here the glass gets uh, tapers a little bit so it goes a little bit like this and that's the same at this side and then we have this bent line and also that line is symmetrical so I made it too narrow I see I think like this that's better see there I made a mistake no problem I take my background color and I adjust it and it doesn't matter that it becomes a little bit messy maybe well, actually, it doesn't get very messy because I just adjust the lines that I've put on. It's just like an eraser when you're drawing with pencil. It's just the same feeling. See? Like this. No problem. Now, then there's another funny thing. We have an ellipse here. And the thing with ellipses is, and that's very strange, you, uh, you can mirror them in two directions. You can mirror left and right, has to be symmetrical, and you can mirror top and bottom. So what I mean is this, when I draw an ellipse, I just put it here because I have a lot of space here. When you make a rectangle and you divide it in halves this way so two halves and you divide it in two halves this way see you get equal parts four equal parts now I can easily make a ellipse in this form by doing this so I have to curve it all the way that it doesn't get too uh, edgy like this and if you do this right it's not quite right but if you do this right then it is a perfect ellipse and you can so this part equals this part this part equals this part see and that's the same here. And it's also the same for the uh, ellipse that we see here. This is just an ellipse, this liquid that we see here, the form of it. And of course, this ellipse. It's all the same uh, thing. But the more we look down on an object, the bigger the ellipse becomes. When we, when we look less down on the object, the ellipse becomes smaller so for instance here we look fairly amount 
on top of the ellipse but if I paint it like this if I make a square well I need a little bit more paint when I make the square like this flatter and I then divide it in four equal parts like this and this then the ellipse gets flatter. Can you imagine? Here we look more on top, here we look more uh, less on top. Well, that's all matter of perspective, but that's not a problem. Uh, we don't have to think about perspective. It's enough to know that you can easily paint in the ellipse, like, and I'm going to do that right now. I look at the upper part, this point, for instance, I have it here, and then I say, okay, this space, it's maybe something like this. So this is the lowest point. Can you imagine? So I have two points already. Then, between those points, there's a middle. Now you can uh, draw a line like this. Again, that's the same line as this one and this one. But you can just also make a line like this. It doesn't matter uh, yet where it starts or ends, just draw a horizontal line as well. Now we're gonna think about where does it end. Now we have this outer line of the glass that goes up. It's, it ends somewhere around here. So I'll put a darker dot in it so you can see it better, like this. You see? Dark dot, dark dot, dark dot, so. And now we can copy that dark dot to the other side. It has to be the same width. See? Like this. So now what we can do you don't have to do it uh, exactly as I do it now, but the thing is, you can draw a rectangle, a rectangle now, like this. And you don't have to do this, but I just want to make the, the idea clear of how you can uh, look at this thing and make it easy for yourself to draw that ellipse. So I have the same thing as what I did here. I have ellipses. I have the, the, the rectangle divided in four equal parts. Now I'm able to draw in the ellipse. Just make it smoothly going, going past all four points. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and there we go, back again to the top. Well, I think we have a nice little ellipse, but we cannot see it very well. So I'll erase all the construction lines. I just take my eraser paint, how shall we call it, like this. Oops, you see? I love it. It's just, I love sketching with paint. You have so much freedom and it uh, uh, doesn't get dirty. And uh, of course you can also wait a while till it's completely dry, then you can do this more easily. But it's like this, you see? Just paint away the things that you don't need and isn't it great painting with acrylics I love it you can build something so fast with acrylics and you don't have to worry about drying times many people uh, complain of course uh, about the drying times and of course the drying time is a difficult thing with acrylics but you get used to it the more you paint 
um, but it's, it's most hard for people that are used to working with um, oil paints. When you uh, stop, when you start uh, painting with acrylics, when you're used to oil paints, it's a disaster at first. Uh, you're used to the very long drying times and that you can um, do the dishes and come back and paint wet and wet, uh, still uh, paint wet and wet. Uh, you can forget it when you paint with acrylics, that's not possible. Okay, that's uh, a lot of talk, but that was our first ellipse uh, there. Now I'm uh, a little bit gonna clean it up a little bit. So. Now we're uh, going to do the rest of the thing, of the glass of course. Well, we uh, have another ellipse here at the bottom of course. So. Let's do the same strategy, but we see slightly more uh, on top of the glass. It's uh, just slightly, it's not a big of a deal, but this is my lowest point of the four points, you remember? So, this, like this, there's a point, uh, I imagine. And then I go upward and I think, okay, where is the other point? It's behind the... <laughs> I don't know what, what it's called in English. No, I really don't know. But it's there. There, behind the thingy. Uh, then, we take a middle point between this, an exact middle. It's here. And there we go again. Let's just make uh, the width. How wide do we want to have it? So. When I look at this point, this is the widest point and this is the widest point. Well, what will I do? I will make it something like this. Oh, we can, that's another thing, I almost forgot. We can, of course, look at the widest part of the glass and compare how wide the foot of the glass is. And I think when I hold it like this, uh, the glass is slightly wider than the the foot of the glass slightly slightly so this is my widest part here like that and then whoop i'll just look and well, maybe something like this but <laughs> we're doing a lot of effort here <laughs> and i just want to make a nice painting and uh, the main purpose was of this painting <laughs> looking at the colors and the planes but yes of course when i'm starting to uh, to do this these things then i can't uh, stop myself i just want to explain everything but this width i'm gonna copy to this side so it's something like this i think we have that line now we can make the rectangle again so i put here this line has to become like this and this up and there. Yeah, in Dutch we say hup, 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 so okay. We do it even so. Dus hup, hup, hup. There you go. And now we are gonna make a nice ellipse again. So, oops, for equal parts, I usually start like this. I don't know why it is. And then uh, I like doing this one. I don't know why I do that and uh, you don't have to do it like this, but that's the way that's the way I do it. And that's always the case with painting. And you see me doing things and you hear me talking about things, but it's all a free choice of course. You don't have to do everything exactly as I do it. I just want to show you some things and maybe some things you like and uh, you want to apply yourself and some things you think mm, I don't like it at all but at least you can try it sometimes and uh, yeah you can choose yourself what you like and what you don't like okay now I'm gonna clean it up again so with my eraser uh, color I'll make the, the lines a little bit more yeah uh, little less thick so a little more elegant you could say like this so
just clean up the mess like this like this okay well and then I have to say something uh, we are gonna make and then we're going to start with the rest of the thingy. <laughs> well, it evolves just a little bit above the middle of the ellipse. The, you have these thingies. It goes like this. And then it goes straight up. In Dutch we call it the foot of the glass. I don't know if that's the same in English, but uh, I will look it up after the video, <laughs> after we've done the video. I'm sorry if I am uh, not clear, but you know what I mean. Like this. So I just look at the lines that I see like this Don't, and here I can't uh, see exactly so I leave that then uh, maybe it's practical to uh, put in some other lines that are important well for instance this dark this dark shape I can make my paint a little bit darker to make it stand out a little bit more but what I see is that it starts uh, somewhere here on the leg of the glass <laughs> let's call it that way like there and then it goes a little bit diagonal like this and it ends somewhere like there see then I see that my glass can be made a little bit higher and nobody warns me. You all sit here watching and nobody tells me that I'm, uh, um, that I'm a little bit off. No problem. We just adjust it. Uh, oh, I'm thinking the wrong way around. Darker color. So I made a mistake somewhere like here. It's a little bit more high. Then it goes more like this. Well, and then of course I have to do that on the other side as well. Like that. Oh, this that side was better. So, okay, this is enough. Okay. Well, let's put in the dark color. Now we're there anyway, so why not? And I like these kind of things when you fill in a color like that or tone value, then you see uh, the shape evolving like that. See? Okay. Now the dark part, uh, let's uh, put in the ellipse inside the glass. Well, it starts around here. Now I'm going to do it freehand. I just look at this line uh, well like something like this but if you want you can do it the same way we did it before but it doesn't have to be too precise I just put it in like this an ellipse I think like this you see I'm, uh, I'm struggling to do it the first time right I just uh, well uh, sort of how do you call it? I, I, I try to feel, get a feel for it and then I can adjust it with the um, eraser color as I call it like this so see up we, we can uh, clear th clean this up as well and we can also clean this up the leg of the glass. Oh, there I ruined the sketch line. No problem. You see? But now what I wanted to do was with that sketch color, 
uh, well, at first I see some dark part here. I just add it in uh, the side of the glass. But then I look at that dark color, the distortion that I see in the glass. So it starts a little bit here, uh, a little bit downward, maybe slightly more. Maybe this has to be a little bit higher. So then this is there. Then it gets darker here and it goes a little bit upward like this. So there approximately it doesn't have to be exactly uh, right at first. But here I see a darker part and this, this darker color, uh, darker value. And here I see it as well. That's that thing. And then I see this. So I look at that darker color, and of course the color I, the paint I'm using right now is not uh, not dark enough, but it's just well to make things clear for myself for when I'm painting in uh, later. So that's 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 one thing. Uh, then I see some darker part over here, like that that thing, that that part. And I see it on the front here, a slightly darker part. And then I think I leave it like that. And then I put here in, uh, also, uh, a darker color as well, just to have something to have something to hold on to. And because I have paint left on my palette that I can use, so <laughs> let's think economically economical. But it's just uh, it's nice for sketching. Why not? You see. Something like that, I think, good enough. And then, of course, I uh, better clean up the mess I made uh, on the table. Well, on the table, I can use that. No, no, no. Now I'm going to clean up the mess I made on the table. I'll use my eraser color. So, and these uh, examples. But there. That's the end of the ellipse theory. <laughs> Goodbye, my friends. You've served your purpose. Now please leave. So, like that. Well, I just wanted to put in those. Oh, yay. And another uh, English word I don't know. <laughs> those dark uh, spots on the table. I'll make my sketch color a little bit lighter with this value and then I put them in so like this. So just look at the form of that slightly darker color. It isn't that dark uh, to be honest, but well, I just put it in already like here and you have all these things and there you have one as well but just globally I don't mind if it's uh, very precise and you have these lines here well something like this doesn't matter too much this looks really ugly now so I'll make that a little bit lighter just because I can stand it so like this and so this is this uh, not not that uh, it was a little bit too dark. Oh, and let me show you. That's uh, something nice but that I can do now. Just to show you again how uh, nice it is to paint on a toned ground. What I can do is, for instance, when I see light parts, I can use more white. So, like this. Oh, oh, I moved the palette. I don't take um, pure white. I I'm, I'm tone it down a little bit with a little bit of gray. But when I see light parts, for instance here, I can paint them in as well. To, to, as a kind of sketch lines, you see? Uh, to... to, to make 
just just at some points uh, that I that I want to use it makes me more comfortable when I'm going to paint with color maybe so like this then I have already have more of a painting more to hold on to so here also I see lighter parts and it is, this is a little bit exaggerated it is a little bit too light so I make it slightly more gray but uh, the values don't uh, match uh, that good at this moment but that's not the problem the, the purpose here is to get uh, points that I can use later on uh, let's take another brush for this line here I just want to do it a little bit more fluently so like this and there we have the dripping stuff so of course I'm, I'm not working with color right now but I can make a sort of sketch with uh, different values to make life easier when we start working with color and you can go as far as you want you can make a complete underpainting as we call it so a color in, uh, in tonal values, for instance, just uh, so with, with a complete range from black to white. But you can also do it like I do now, just a little bit, uh, yeah, intuitive. The, the values aren't correct or something, but I just want to have something to hold on to later on. Here as well, I see a lighter... Um, part I see a form a shape and I put that shape in and here I see another one <coughs> I don't mind the colors because I'm working with black and white still with grays and the same goes for here I like to put in that lighter part here that you see so then it's already there like this and but mainly the place where I like it most is in the foot of the glass so on top there's a light part here And there's a side part there and a side part there and here we have some light I just look at the shapes the forms of the light parts and I paint that in I don't mind colors I don't have to be bothered by colors I just want to give my sketch uh, that it makes a little bit more sense like this I think so here is this thing and then here is a sort of round form very light round form well something like this so you see you can build up a sketch very easily with paint I, I really like it and maybe it isn't a bad idea as well to um, so with just a little bit of black and white paint you can make sketching very enjoyable I just want to put in this as well well before I go into too much detail I'll, I quit I stop oh I just want to add in some more of the darkest parts sorry I also like to add some of the darkest part in here so like this 
I've used a little bit too much of my paint. So here I see a darker shape like this. It goes down this way. And then here in the middle, I see a kind of dark shape like this, I think. And something like this. Well, that's enough for there. And I see a dark shape here. And the point is, and that uh, that will become clear if we go uh, if we go on with color. The point is that the when you just put in the right values or the uh, right colors. Uh, when you put in the right values and the right colors, the picture will evolve automatically and it will automatically become a transparent glass of wine. My, my glass isn't perfect, but I think I don't mind it too much. Maybe this is a little bit too wide, for instance. I will change that. Now I'm still here. Well, I'm still here. So this is a little bit too wide. I'll adjust it a little bit. See? These kind of things. Well, that happens. But uh, let it dry. Look with fresh eyes. Adjust the mistakes you see or the things you don't like. And then go on with color. Thanks for watching. See you next time in part two.